Hey everybody. So this is going to be another one of my sort of future projections, inevitable future outcomes, I believe. You know, as I say, it's just an opinion thing. It is based basically in science. And I know when I get into this subject, there's going to be an awful lot of people trying to denounce the technology using, well, it's not science. I've done one of these talking about AI and possible robots in the healthcare system. Uh, this one's going to be talking about electric vehicles. Now, I know, um, as I say, a lot of people are very much against electric vehicles. There are some very good arguments as to why they're not ready yet, and I'm going to get into that. Um, but there is also a lot of arguments people have that just aren't based in reality. If, if you've never ridden an electric, if you've never experienced electric, if you've never lived with an electric motorcycle, you don't know necessarily that much about it. Of course, you can do plenty of research and get some good conclusions, um, but I have had electric motorcycles lent to me for weeks at a time. I have lived with them. Uh, I've charged them. I've charged them using public chargers. I've gone through all the infrastructure things. I've been through it. I know what it's like currently for me in this location doing what I did with the bike. But that's not what this is about. This is about future projections. Inevitabilities that are going to come in the future. Well, if we accept that the 2030 internal combustion engine ban is going to happen and come into effect, which I believe it is, uh, and then hybrids will be outlawed in 2035, we are going to see petrol engined motorcycles slowly being replaced by electrics. Now when the ban comes in, that doesn't mean you can't use a petrol bike, you can, you just can't buy a new one. So up until you know 2029, to the last day, there is going to be a very interesting sale of well, companies trying to sell off every single last petrol bike they have, I assume. It's going to be a very interesting time for the market and the used motorcycle market for petrol bikes is going to go through the roof. The people out there who have a motorcycle buying addiction and they're sat nicely stored in your shed or lockup or something know this and <laughs> you're just waiting for those few more years. This isn't actually the side of it I even want to talk about. I want to talk about a much cooler future thing. Uh, but I have to cover this bit first because this is what everyone's going to go on about. I know. Do I think that electric bikes are currently in a position that they're about eight years away from being perfect to replace all internal combustion engine bikes? No, I don't think they are. And I don't think they need to either. As I've said, you know, up until 2029, they are going to be selling petrol bikes. People will still have petrol bikes. People will be buying, you know, secondhand petrol bikes. The electrics will have got a lot cheaper, the options will become more plentiful and things will become better with them. I'm not making an argument as to whether they're better for the environment, I'm not going to make an argument about any of these things in this video because that's not what I want to talk about. And I think we can just accept that whether it's good or bad, that is the inevitable future we're going down. And if anyone wants to say, oh well no, I'm not waiting for electric, I'm going to wait for a hydrogen motorcycle, I'm sorry to tell you, your beliefs are not based in science. We will never see hydrogen powered motorcycles, in my opinion, because it is incredibly inefficient and a waste of time. Also, they're rubbish. It makes so much more sense to just charge a battery and run it with an electric motor. I do actually have a very in-depth video discussing why hydrogen isn't the best option and why it's not going to be good for motorcycles. So. There's my standpoint on it. I'm not saying it's definitely the, the best thing ever. I will say I love electric bikes. I've used many different sized ones. I think they're actually fantastic. But of course, nothing can replace a petrol bike in the way that it feels because it is just a petrol bike and it will become that super cool old thing that people used to drive. Just like in a, in a future film, you know, when the, the granddad's got a car sat there, it's like an old Mustang or something and it's completely different. What film is this from? It's completely, it's like old school. No. Demolition Man. You know, they're all driving the, the modern cars with a capacitance gel, and that's really interesting that they should bring up capacitance gel. I've, I've talked about that, I'm not going to get into it here necessarily, but that is a, it's not, that is not a current technology, but that is not that far-fetched. Solid state batteries, you know, these sorts of replaceable gel batteries, it could be a thing. We're getting there. Things are progressing. Now, oh, 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 I'm going to have to go sideways for one more second. That is that people say, well, lithium and this and lithium that. Look, lithium polymer batteries were invented by Sony for Walkmans about, oh, what was it, 1970 something? Or, no, 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 it was newer than that, much newer than that. Sorry, I can't remember the year off the top of my head. I, I recently have talked about this. If you look into it, origins of lithium ion batteries, you'll see they are not old, they were made by Sony for a personal Walkman, um, and they just proved to be so much better than all the other options that were around. We haven't replaced that yet. 
my question to people saying about oh, how lithium this, lithium that, what on earth makes you think that lithium is the only thing that we're going to use? Like, there isn't going to be any, a development in batteries. Like, it's been a huge development since I was a kid. I remember when, you know, the small batteries didn't last any amount of time, power tools were completely weedy. Now you have power tools which have got massive power behind them, they're nearly as powerful as mains voltage stuff, and they last all day. And they just have a small battery pack on the underneath it. Don't be so, so short-sighted as to think we won't get there. Well, that's a lot of groundwork, and I probably haven't covered every single angle, which people will remind me in about three split seconds as soon as video goes online, they start leaving comments. But it's cool, it just means I didn't cover everything. That's one of the things, people, if I make an hour-long video on a subject, I'll, I can't cover one or two things, and then people are like, ah, you forgot that. No, I didn't. I just can't make the video an hour long. I could talk about this subject for days. So let's get into those inevitable futures. There's a few of them. One of them is super cool. And that is internal combustion engine motorcycle conversions. I would love to see companies making bolt-on conversion kits for existing internal combustion engine motorcycles. How cool would that be? Now, I know that we're gonna have to somehow have a smaller battery or, or somehow change the way the battery is put in the frame or, or you're going to have to work something out there because electric bike frames are not like internal combustion engine bike frames because they don't they aren't designed to have the same stuff inside them with the same requirements of position and stuff you know you can have the battery in front upside down underneath behind the side of the motor it doesn't make a difference whereas in motors and other stuff in bikes tend to have a certain way around with the radiator facing forwards exhaust backwards you know what I mean so that's one of the freeing things about motorcycle design that electric brings is that you don't have to conform to the old standards of frames. But it would be cool if people came along and made, you know, it's a motor, a battery pack, a speed controller kit, uh, you've got obviously a throttle, and convert a bike to electric that wasn't before. This is inevitable in my view. It is unquestionable that this will happen, whether that be a, a new kit or whether that be, you know, you buy a, 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 some old parts from electric bikes and cobble something together yourself. The only thing I have about that though, and that's one of my concerns for this entire idea, which I still haven't quite got into, is the right to repair stuff that's happening with electric bikes. You know, coding motors, coding this, doing this with batteries, it's, it's done in the name of safety and yet the reality is it's, it's trying to get you to not really own the thing that you buy and uh, you know zero they are oh they sell a motorcycle that you pay to unlock an extra 10 percent of the battery which you bought and already own they don't put a new battery in there an extra little booster pack no no no, no. that battery is already there in your bike it is lithium it is materials it is emissions out of the earth which are there that you pay to use this idea of doing things is, it's new, it's growing, and it's disgusting. And companies are going to need to be, well, the, the government is going to have to outlaw these sorts of things. You know, there, there are other examples of things where, um, electric vehicles, where you'll have battery pack control, all that stuff, your motor burns out. Oh, great, well, it's, it's only four bolts and two plugs. I'll just take the old motor out and put the new one in. No, it won't work because it's coded to your, like, ECU, as it were. That is another one of my inevitable conclusions, that enough people are going to get peed off by these practices that they will be outlawed by the government. I, oh God, I hope so badly that is actually the reality of it. It needs to be. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to say, well, you should boycott any company that does that. Well, maybe. I'm not about to buy an electric motorcycle myself. However, I will review them and honestly say about that side of it, if that is involved the model that I am using. Yes, I do have a zero review coming up. Yet again, let it be seen that I don't mind talking about the things the companies that lend me bikes absolutely definitely do not want you to be talking about. It's a real shame, uh, but I see it from this perspective. It ain't me that did that, it was them, and it was a poor idea then, it's a poor idea now, and the sooner they stop doing it, the better, and the more people that call them out on it, the better. So, that, as I say, is the thing that could kibosh this idea, but the core of my futuristic, it's inevitable future idea is this. The sparky electric motorcycle dude, think cyberpunk, think stripping down old electric bikes, taking motors from this, controllers from that, interchanging stuff, making custom bikes. The framework on them, as I say, doesn't need to be anywhere as, as set as it is now. We can really make some interesting machines at home. 
and it's so simple because the only thing you need to make sure you get right is the motor placed in the right position to in regards to your sprocket assuming it's belt or chain driven um, if it's a hub motor well then that's just a case of getting that motor within the hub there'll be other options available you know picking your batteries it's going to be so cool now this is a question that people brought up which was when in the future with electric motorcycles what do you do do you get it MOT'd or pat tested <laughs> the answer is you'll get it MOT'd but the testers will have to train up now most of the things they test on a motorcycle uh, you know MOT do not really make much difference when it comes to the electric sure there's emissions and loudness and and stuff like that but and leakages well, well yeah it depends if it's a, a cool version of the electrics but you know it's, it's still wheel bearings brakes mirrors lights that sort of stuff it's, it's pretty standard fare now will mechanics be able to work on electric bikes and that's part of the reason why the companies argue oh well you know we sh you shouldn't you shouldn't play with these things yourself they're far too dangerous uh, you, you shouldn't you know people could do things to your bike that could be very very dangerous like I don't know they they hack it and and then they put a code in there that means that when you hit 55 miles an hour it's just gonna slam the throttle full and you're gonna get killed by it these are realities that could be done assassinations through hacking your auto drive of your car could have already been done and these are things we're gonna have to consider in the future as things become more electronic as they become more intelligent as they become more remotely controllable they can be maliciously remotely controlled you know a bike like this which is is dumb basically it's just a battery electrical circuit on the engine nothing can tell this to stop working other than an EMP burst or itself you know this is the DR after all if you're if you're not a subscriber of my channel you won't understand that joke and I might ask you to subscribe because I'm close to 100k continuing on you know the other thing is like batteries people say about oh all the batteries on electric bikes won't last Zero's got a guarantee on their batteries, which is about, I think it's up to 100,000 miles and you'll still get 80% of your charge in that battery. It doesn't reduce the speed of the bike or anything like that, it just reduces your overall range, depending on how the bike is programmed, of course. That battery, when it's, you know, it's done 100,000 miles, which is more than most petrol bikes will ever do. You know, 100,000 miles on a petrol bike, people consider that thing to be basically a fossil. But people have the impression that that battery now is completely useless, and it is not. It can be used for all sorts of things. You can plug it into a solar cell, charge out the battery at your house, and then use that to charge your motorcycle overnight. No reason you can't do that. Someone else could buy that battery and use it for a smaller machine, you know, that's not using the same sort of power output, and that sort of range is absolutely fantastic to them. They wouldn't be able to afford a battery with that sort of range on their own as a new battery, but as a second-hand used one that's converted into using for other things, then sure, that could be absolutely great for them and work fine. This is the thing about electrics. It's interesting. If you, if you just want to run around that can get you around town like I'm riding now, it needs so little power. So, so little power to do this. But if you want something that's as, you know, as fast as a petrol bike, or well, actually faster, you know, then it's going to eat a lot more juice. But, but you kind of adapt your power usage as you go. It's the equivalent of going, oh, I'm in town, put my bike into 125cc mode. Oh, now I'm on the motorway, let's put it into 800 mode. Now I'm on the, on the track, let's put it into ludicrous mode. And personally, I think that will be a really cool future. As I say, I'm not, I don't hate electrics. I actually enjoy riding electric bikes. I, I wouldn't be sad if someone said, you know, you've got an option, you either ride no bike ever again or an electric. I'd be like, that's cool, I can deal with electric. I totally get why people want to hold on to the petrols, and you can, forever and ever. You know, they'll be grandfathered through until you can't buy petrol anymore. The thing, though, about the electrics and the internal combustions, where people are so dead against it, is I think their hand's going to get forced, whether they like it or not. And what I mean by that is, sure, you can keep your internal combustion engine bike, as I'm planning to, assuming both my bikes are still running in eight years, assuming I have these bikes in eight years, it's, it's, I don't know, you know, there's certainly eight years, a long time. Long, long time, a lot can change. The cost of that fuel could be ginormous. You know, you've got dwindling stocks, lack of production, so people aren't going to be using it as much. That puts up the price. The oil company is going to want to make as much as they possibly can. And then you add on top of it the government saying, well, you shouldn't be using petrol anyway. So it's like, well, like, you shouldn't be taxed. And you're looking at what? <laughs> At what point do people stop wanting to use their petrol motorcycle when it's five pounds a litre? There is going to become a point where you're like, I love petrol bikes, but I just can't afford to run them. 
these, I think, are inevitable future things. As I said in my first video, progress is like a steamroller. You either get out of the way of it, get on board, or get flattened. I'm not even saying here that it's a good thing that this is happening. Like, I agree this should happen. I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't just continue to use internal combustion engine bikes. I'm not getting into that argument. I have opinions on it, but I'm not going to really get into it. I've just said that I'm, you know, I get it from many different sides. As I say, one of the arguments people will have is, well, the sound of the internal combustion engine is just, oh, it's so good. This entire video, you've listened to this bike drone along uh, about the same sort of pace and maybe you just heard a little rumble. If I'd been on electric, you'd, ha you'd hear whizzy noises. You know, wee. All right, okay, that, that's not whizzy, that's, that's, that's machine gun like, but you know what I'm saying. If electric bikes are truly an inevitable future, I don't think that that future is inevitably bad. I think there's gonna be some inevitable good things that will come from it. Some cool things that could never exist were it not for those rules being implemented. Yes, it will bring some things that are bad, many, many things that are bad. It will change the world as we know it. For us as a generation, we may be, well, the next generation as well, maybe, or a couple of generations, who knows? We will be the last to know, likely, what it was like to regularly use petrol, internal combustion engines, motorcycles. And they're gonna look back at our stuff and be like, why did they use that? It's awful, it's slow, they go wrong all the time, they're overly complicated. You know, you, you want to do an engine swap on an electric bike, assuming it's not coded. It's probably going to half an hour's job. What do you think about some inevitable future projections for electric bikes? As I say, if you think it's not going to happen, you don't need to go into some thesis length comment with no real science in it or no links to actual claims that you've made. We get that many people are against that. But if we accept it's an inevitability and resisting this inevitability is pointless and wasting your time, why don't we see the cool things about it that could happen? You can make the best of any situation. But yeah, I am very interested in what your thoughts on this are. I, I, I'm not saying that I want to replace my bike with an electric anytime soon, because I don't. But I would have an electric. Hmm. Until the next one. Bye-bye.